Hello everybody. Welcome to AMLIS Fast Live Plus. Today's first topic is Five Laws of Library Science. The Five Laws of Library Science is a theory proposed by a Dr. Esha Ranganathan in 1931. Five laws of library science are called the set of norms, prospects, and guides to good practice in librarianship. Dr. Esa Ranganathan conceived the first laws of library science in 1924. These laws were first published in Ranganathan's classic book entitled Five Laws of Library Science in 1931. The laws are books are for use, every reader his or her book, every book its reader, save the time of the reader, the, far, the library is a growing organism. The need of laws of library and information science give pressure at the subconscious level to work. Scientific methods are applicable equally in both natural and social sciences. These were hypotheses in the natural science and normative principles in the social sciences helps library science to become an independent subject a subject cannot stand in its position unless some fundamental laws are not attached to it so by proposing the laws ranganathan put the first stone in this direction denote library practices laws of library science contain a latest form all the library practices to the past and the present and to those which are likely to be evolved in the future serve as a higher court these laws are applicable to any problem in the areas of library science, library service, and library practices. Now, the implications of the laws. First law, books are for use. And the implications are open access. In this system, every reader is allowed to go to the shelves and choose the book of this or her interests location a library should be situated near the center place library building and furniture there should be a functional library building with pleasant natural and electrical light soothing interior good looking furniture comfortable chairs etc library techniques Proper cataloging and classification of books are essential for promoting the use of books. Library staff. A library cannot come up cannot come up to the expectation of the first law unless its staff is attentive and cheerful and cares for the books and readers. Reference service. Reference service aims to establish the right contact between the right reader and the right book at the right time. The implication of second law, every reader his or her book. Obligation of the state. Ranganathan has discussed obligations of the state under three head, finance, legislation and coordination. Obligation of the library authority. The second law has something to say to library authorities in respect to the selection of books and staff. Obligation of the staff. Library staff should be cooperative and service minded. Library staff should form a bridge between readers and books. Obligation of the reader. The second law expects the readers also to discharge some responsibilities. Readers should be disciplined and to follow rules and regulations. 
third lot every book its reader implications open access it is one of the most effective ways to ensure that the maximum number of books are seen by the readers book selection give full weightage to the tastes and requirements of the clientele of the library if the right books are selected it will definitely find its reader self arrangement if the book are arranged so that the subjects get arranged according to the degree of mutual relationships then each book would have a higher probability of getting its reader cataloging proper cataloging of books is very important as even through there may be well planned and arranged booked on the shelves but they are incapable merely by itself extension service a library does this by organizing exhibitions music concerts a magic show celebration of local and national festivals etc the implication of fourth law save the time of the reader self arrangement classification and cataloging book should be arranged on shelves according to the classification number regular self rectification is also essential open access in a closed access of book time is wasted unnecessarily in open access the time of the reader is saved reference service the reference staff establishes a contact between the book and the reader by providing reference service and a long range reference service thereby saving the time of the reader fifth law the library is a growing organism implications balanced growth the collection should grow in all the areas of subjects keeping in view the needs and requirements of all the readers as far as possible modernization libraries may have to think of computerization of the various housekeeping jobs like acquisition circulations cataloging etc staff when a library grows the sanction staff at some stage become inadequate so at the time an increase of staff should be considered now the resource sharing literary resource sharing means joint use of resources resource refers to the source which one uses to get some work to be more specific we can say the resources in a library are staff infrastructure documents and services sharing entitles a relationship of reciprocity where the two parties offer their resources to each other for mutual benefit objectives of resource sharing the objectives of resource sharing are very idealistic reduction in all round cost avoidance of unnecessary duplication of information resources and their processing and maintenance cost provision of greater access to information resources to be wider category of users and development of specialized areas of collection building each library concentrating on areas of its own concern now some advantages of resource sharing libraries would be able to acquire documents in greater number that are used heavily by their users and share others with other libraries 
they would have access to greater number of documents sharing of expertise of staff would enable them to save on staff time and thus feeling them to interact more with the users to provide effective services. Next, library networking. The development of sophisticated technologies in computer and communication field has upset libraries worldwide in storing and transmitting information. This technology introduced the network system. When a group of libraries using computers decide to exchange information, a network is developed. Objectives of library network to promote resource sharing and cooperation, cooperation activities among libraries to establish referral centers to monitor and facilitate catalog search to develop a specialist bibliographic database of books, serials and non-book materials for search and access, to create a database of projects, specialists and institutions for providing online information services. Some functions of library networks. First, information services to users. Information services to users are interlibrary loan. It means that each member of library may require having the facility to photocopy of for delivering the document. Reference and referral. Each member library may require the facility of a having dedicated telephone and email services, access to database to prepare retrospective bibliography for the purpose of browsing to know whether or not a document is available. Technical services to member libraries. The technical services are cooperative collection development program, technical processing involved in acquisition, cataloging and other means of resources to identify and to locate documents, circulation control system. See management service to network administration. The management services are establish an operational system that implement the functions mentioned above evaluation of the network this is done through collection of statistics analysis of performance of the network user studies technical activities these are done through staff development programs user oriented programs cost analysis it involves determination of costs, fees to be collected, etc. and allocation of budgets. Now, library networks in India. The concept of library network come, came into light after 1985 when the working group of the planning commission reported a modernized, modernized plan on National Policy on Library and Information System to the Ministry of HRD Government of India on the 7th five-year plan. The Department of Science and Industrial Research DSIR Government of India started to promote the integrated approach to library automation and networking based on the UGC report prepared by the Association of Indian Libraries 1987. First, Ahmedabad Library Network ADINET. ADINET is the library network of Ahmedabad area. It was established in 1994 with an initial grant for a few years from National 
Information System for Science and Technology, Nishat. Adinet caters to libraries of school, college, universities, institutional libraries and even public libraries in Ahmedabad. Bangalore Academic Library Network, Belnet. Belnet was established in 1995 in sponsored by JRD Tata Memorial Library Bangalore. Belnet caters to their libraries of Bangalore areas to facilitate the sharing of resources. Bombay Library Network Bonnet was set up in 1992 by National Center for Software Technology NCST, Mumbai sponsored by Nishat. Calcutta Library Network Calibnet was established in 1986 with the financial help from Nishat. The main objective of Calibnet is to provide access of information to the library and information centers in eastern region. Developing Library Network Delnet was established in 1988. Uh, and registered as a society in 1992 from the financial support of Nishat at the India International Center Library, International Center Library, Delhi. Now, Information and Library Network in Flipnet. In Flipnet was established in 1991 with the objective of establishing, accum uh, establishing accumulation between the libraries and information centers, universities, colleges, UGC information centers, institution, institutes of national importance, r and information centers, etc. as a program of the University Grants Commission. Initially, it was located at the Gujarat University campus, Ahmedabad, but later it was shifted to Gandhinagar. Madras Library Network, Malibnet. Malibnet was established as a society in the 1993 to bring about cooperative working among libraries and information centers in and around Madras. Membership of Malibnet is open to universities, colleges, R&D institutions, industries and individuals.